So Kevin will be talking about the necessity of construct and external validity for generalized causal claims. The stage is yours. Uh, where's the clicker? Is there a clicker? Did you have a clicker? Is oh, is this it? Yeah, that's the clicker. So that's the green button. Oh, the green button. Okay, yes. I got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, the, over the past few decades, social science has seen the rise of something called the credibility revolution that promotes a deductive approach to quantitative causal inference. And the writers of the credibility revolution helpfully point out that just finding a statistically significant contrast, like between a treatment and a control group, is not enough to make a uh, causal claim credible in this deductive sense that we also have to make an assumption of internal validity to make the claim deductively true. And you know, while different designs might have different kind of technical or ancillary assumptions that you also have to make, really it's the assumption of internal validity that's the core assumption uh, for the credibility revolution and it's what drives it. And while the authors of the credibility revolution emphasize internal validity, they almost entirely neglect considerations of construct and external validity. And I think you guys probably already know that, but if you need evidence for it, you could look at all the famous textbooks on uh, quantitative uh, causal inference, and uh, uh, typically they don't even have index entries for either construct validity or external validity. And it's not just this literature, but I think science as a whole takes internal validity as kind of the paramount or pre premier consideration for causality. And then uh, a lot of times things like construct and external validity are sort of afterthoughts if they're thought about at all. And what, what we want to show is that uh, just like internal validity, construct and external validity also are necessary for preserving the deductiveness of causal claims. Um, and also they're essential for, for just the accumulation of scientific knowledge. And the way I'm going to show that is I'm going to make use of this uh, wonderful paper from uh, Green Gerber, or Gerber Green and Larimer that they published a number of years back in the American Political Science Review. And this is one of my very favorite papers that's ever been published in the APSR. And what they did was they did this, what's called a get out the vote experiment. So in the run up to the primary election in Michigan in 2006, uh, the authors uh, sent out uh, different postcards to registered voters urging them to vote. And what they wanted to know was, well, which of the different messages was most effective? Uh, and they did it as an RCT, so they randomized which postcard different registered voters got. So some of them got what, what we could call uh, postcard A, and if you were to read that, you would see it's a civic duty message. It's your civic duty to get out and vote. Other people were randomized to, to postcard B, um, that it's more complicated, but if you read it, you'd see what they're doing is trying to use social norms uh, to create social pressure to get people to vote. Uh, the outcome was just whether the registered voter actually voted, and obviously they, they expected the, the social pressure postcard to have more a bigger effect than the civic duty one. So remember, the, the, the credibility revolution wants us to be deductive with our uh, causal claims, and so we have to be transparent about the uh, premises, uh, which means that we have to be transparent both about our, the assumptions and also the evidence. And so for the assumptions, because they did the randomization, you know, they can well warrant an assumption of internal validity, so they make that assumption. And then they also make these other technical and ancillary assumptions for the RCT. Um, but they do not make any assumptions in the paper about construct or external validity. And then for evidence, they did find a statistically significant treatment effect. And in fact, the, um, the registered voters that got the social pre pressure postcard were 8% more likely to vote than those that got the civic duty one. Um, and for this field, that is a huge effect. And if you think about it, it's an effect that's big enough that it could actually cha change an election. Uh, and so it's a, a really important finding. And so for their claim, uh, they conclude, and this is a quote from their paper, uh, uh, their, their claim is that the, their results demonstrate the profound importance of social pressure as an inducement to political participation. So they, they write their claim in a way that makes it clear this is a result that's important for democracy, not just for political scientists, but right, for, for society as a whole. But let's think for a second about how their assumptions connect their evidence to their claim. Uh, and so the evidence is, you, you can see across the top row, right, that they have variables that track postcards and recorded votes in that one time and place. 
Um, and, but their claim about social pressure causing political participation in this general sense, um, notice, is more in terms of these metaphysical events that, that occur at, in the real world, or what philosophers would call uh, ontological reference in, in nature. And I can tell you that the readers of the APSR care about these ontological reference. They, they don't care about the actual data that, that the authors collected. They care about the, the claim uh, in, 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 the, in the real world. And so let's think about how their assumptions connect their evidence to their claim. So I mentioned that they did not make an assumption of construct validity. And so, um, but if they had, they would have been able to connect their variables to the actual cause and the actual effect. But because they didn't make assumptions about construct validity, uh, we have to grade that assumption out. Uh, and likewise, uh, you know, an assumption of external validity would tell us how the results might generalize outside of their study and maybe where the results might transport to and maybe where it doesn't transport to. But again, they didn't make any assumptions about external validity, so we have to grade that one out as well. They did make an assumption of internal validity, and so we can say, and they demonstrated, that the probability that a registered voter voted differed across the AB postcard text in this one time and place. But notice there is nothing about internal validity that connects their evidence to their claim. Um, so you could think about internal validity, if you only use internal validity, that essentially disconnects the evidence from the claim. Uh, and so as a result, the, their claim is deductively false. But if they had made the assumption of construct and external validity in addition to internal validity, then the, the, the claim that they made would be deductively true. When we share this paper with our applied statistics colleagues, a lot of times they get like really agitated with us or they get upset and they'll say things like, geez, come on, dude. Other people have already told us that construct and external validity are important. You know, we all read Cook and Campbell in grad school and, and now it's Shadish Cook and Campbell and, you know, blah, blah, blah. We already know these things are important. So you're not telling us anything new. And what I want to emphasize is that that is not our argument. Okay, so we, we completely agree with Shadish, Cook, and Campbell that construct and external validity are, are important. And in fact, they're, they're, they're foundational for good science. But that is not our argument. Our argument is that in addition to that, uh, construct and external validity are also necessary for preserving the deductiveness of a causal claim. And they're as necessary as an assumption of internal validity. And uh, omitting any one of those, be it's because omitting any one of those assumptions makes the deductive claim false, right? And that in turn would undermine the goal of the credibility revolution to have this deductive understanding of causality. And for this meeting, what I want to do is go back to the slide I showed earlier and emphasize uh, that internal validity in and of itself does not enable the accumulation of scientific knowledge. Um, because what internal validity tells us is that a cause occurred in the course of the experiment at that one time. But there's nothing about internal validity that tells us anything about what was the cause, what was the effect, and how the causal effect might generalize to other settings. Um, so if you're using internal validity, for example, in your, uh, as your selection criteria for which papers to include into your meta-analysis, right, then you have no guarantee that your meta-analysis is coherent. Uh, and so pr I, I just loved Professor Senna's uh, presentation earlier because it's really an exemplar of how to think about doing meta-analysis in a coherent way. So, so that was wonderful. Oops. So as you all know, if I were to write a paper that used observational data and a correlation coefficient to make a causal claim, and I submitted that paper to a political science journal, the, the referees would not only reject it, but they would angrily reject it. And they would say, how dare this author write such terrible things? And that's fine. I, like, I don't have a problem with that. But what we want to do is to make people, you know, referees and all of us equally forceful with our concern about construct and external validity, because all three of those assumptions, internal, construct, and external, uh, are necessary for deduction, for generalization, and for the accumulation of scientific knowledge. 
So uh, thank you. That's, that's how you can see our paper. And I yield back my time. That's what we say in, in political thank, science. Thank you for finishing on time. <laughs> that was excellent. We have two minutes for questions, so please uh, use the microphones if you have any questions. Jonathan Fuller, NIH. Uh, so I'm just wondering if your claim is that we should be using deductive methodologies to establish uh, things like construct and external validity, or if you're just pointing out that yeah. we can't make assumptions about external validity unless, uh, you know, and, and purport to say it's deductive unless we consider these assumptions. And so what methodologies are you kind of advocating for, for yeah. establishing that? Yeah, thank you for asking. So I didn't have time to, to say why the, um, our applied statistics friends get upset with our paper. And so the uh, people, so in applied statistics, people are very uh, comfortable with using uh, 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 randomization to warrant uh, internal validity because it's part of the apparatus of kind of, of making inferences. Um, but what we say in the paper is that the only way that you can establish, that you can warrant assumptions for construct and external validity is through qualitative research. And so, and so what that means is that the uh, uh, good science then, good quantitative science, would usually be interdisciplinary working with teams that are good at, at also using, doing qualitative methods. And the reason they get so bad is what they want to do is just collect their data, make their assumptions, push a button, and make a, ca a causal claim. Uh, but doing, doing good causal research is a lot harder than that. So yeah, thank you for asking. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, really interesting. Um, Christabel Young, Cornell Sociology. Okay, so I love this, and I just wanted to share an anecdotal piece of research, study on the effects of migration on people's, you know, labor market experience in the future. Does migration help people's livelihoods? Um, tricky causal question. So they found a volcano in Iceland in the 1970s that erupted and led maybe 700 people to move off a tiny little island in Iceland to the mainland because lava covered their houses. And what they showed is that for the young people, that actually really helped their labor market future, but for the older people, it didn't. And I was just sort of like, wow, I guess we really don't care about external validity anymore. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, so I'm really curious, what do you yeah. think we ought to be doing differently, or how yeah. can we build on this to make that external validity claim? What, yeah. Is there like a checklist? What kind of criteria? Yeah, it's, it's just it's sort of what I mentioned to the previous question is, is first of all, just being more self-conscious about, about uh, kind of warranting assumptions of construct and external validity, even if it's just from your intuitions, to be transparent that it's about, these are my intuitions of how the constructs match my variables and how, how, what are the conditions that enable my cause to transport. Um, but, but then if you could do it in addition with using good qualitative methods, that helps to even give a better warrant. So yeah, I think I'm out of time, but thank you so much. Thanks for your questions.